I actually tried to use wired headphones in the gym just to remind myself how it used to be. And it sucked. Do you know what really bugs me about the tech community? It's this incessant complaining about the loss of the headphone jack and smartphones. I mean, I do get it, change can be a scary thing, but I think it's time we all move on, people. So the way I see it, there are two camps. You have your jack-ons and you have your jack- uh oh probably shouldn't finish that sentence. Uh, pro jack, anti jack? I'm sure there's some PC label for it, but those who love the headphone jack would always argue that it is the best way to consume audio. And granted, between wireless and wired, wired is still king. But is the gap as wide as it used to be? I'm not so sure. Just a reminder folks, it's been five long years since Apple courageously removed the headphone jack from the iPhone 7. And back then it caused a myriad of mockery from consumers and competitors alike. That is until of course, competitors started to follow suit. What this did was offer a much wider adoption of wireless audio. Now I'll be the first to admit the first few years were, they were kind of rough. Bluetooth was notoriously spotty, just crossing the road would cause your audio to drop out. But fast forward five years and now you have a wireless headset to suit any budget from ultra affordable to ultra premium. All of which have much better connectivity and audio quality. The wider adoption also helped forward the progression of wireless audio with companies like Apple putting forth features like spatial audio that uses your headphones gyrometer to help keep the audio right in front of you in a fixed position. So who knows how far the technology can go. So my question to the jack-ons out there is, are you sure you're not just suffering from rose-tinted nostalgia? I mean, are we forgetting the wear and tear wired headphones go through? The gross stuff you can dig out the port? <laughs> Let's not forget the inconvenience of putting them away. Pathetic. What? And the tangling. I actually tried using wired headphones in the gym just to remind myself how it used to be. And it sucked. Wires would get tangled in gym equipment and particularly explosive moves would result in the jack coming right out, exposing the rest of the gym goers to my embarrassing J-pop gym playlist. In this particular scenario, wireless is definitely the way to go. Pause the video right there. Guys, I am here looking at our analytics and I gotta say, Almost 85% of you who watch our videos are not subscribed. 85%. Guys, you gotta get that, you gotta get that number down. Ping the hell out of that subscribe button. Hit the like button too. And the bell. Don't forget to ring that bell. Know when we're coming up with new hot stuff. Cause we always come with the hot stuff. Nothing but the hot stuff. I'm gonna stop saying hot stuff. Anyway, back to the video. Now, don't think I can't hear you jackons back there outraged in the comments. Jenny, wonder when your battery dies and you're left with no music. To that, I say... So? We live in a charged up society. We've been conditioned to always have battery life in the background of our minds, whether it be charging on a schedule or carrying a power bank with you. We've always been trained to keep charging in mind. Not to mention a lot of companies are now offering fast charging for their wireless earbuds that gives you an hour of listening from just five minutes of the plug. Plus, let's not forget, with the omission of the headphone jack, leaves more real estate in the phone for newer, more innovative features. For example, would the haptic engine be as advanced as it is right now if they still had to contend with space restraints? 
In something as small as a phone, every millimeter counts, which means this could lead to even further future innovations. On the smaller side, I know a lot of people argue, like how do you listen to music and keep your phone charged if there's no headphone jack? And to me, I say that is a perfect use case for wireless audio because then you don't have to worry about plugging in several dongles just to be able to do two things at once. And finally, the biggest argument jack-ons have is wireless audio is not for audiophiles. Well, duh. The way we consume audio has changed. Spotify and Apple Music have ensured that the majority of people are now streaming. So wired or wireless, you're getting a step down in quality regardless. However, Apple has now added lossless streaming to Apple Music. So you can now enjoy lossless sound with your Apple products. We are so excited to introduce lossless audio to Apple Music. Oh, this is great. I can't wait to hear this on my AirPods Max. I, I can listen to them on my AirPods Max, right? Yeah, none of the wireless earbuds or headphones are compatible with this new lossless audio. And none of their phones have headphone jacks. But then how do... While I try and wrap my head around that, here's CNET's David Carnoy to tell you about the advances in wireless audio technology. Thanks, Jade. So the big issue with lossless audio over Bluetooth is that Bluetooth simply wasn't designed to handle lossless audio. It just doesn't have the bandwidth. If you have a collection of lossless audio files, you know how big they can get and Bluetooth just isn't equipped to deal with them. So the solution is to go with proprietary Bluetooth audio codecs using compression technology that under the right conditions can get you to near lossless audio or something that sounds very close to as good as lossless audio. A lot of people think Sony's LDAC codec, with some caveats, is the best audio codec right now. And that Qualcomm's aptX HD, or aptX HD as I call it, is a small step below that. And then you have the more universally available AAC codec just behind them. But that's all debatable, of course. I can get really granular here and talk about 16-bit versus 24-bit depths and audio resolutions. But one of the problems when you get into so-called high resolution wireless audio codecs is that you need to have the right devices to support them. Apple's iOS devices like the iPhone and iPad only support AAC. And for most people, it sounds just fine. LDAC and AppDAC only work with Android devices and certain dedicated music players like a Sony Walkman model. And then of course you need a headphone or speaker that supports those codecs and it better be a really good headphone or speaker or it won't matter. On top of that, if you're using a streaming service, you need one like Quobuzz, Amazon, or Tidal that offer high fidelity streaming for Android devices. And while Bluetooth connectivity continues to improve with each new iteration, you can always run into some interference issues and you can only wander so far away from the device you're streaming from before things start to degrade. For the average consumer, the quality using any of these codecs is really good and Bluetooth streaming has come a long way from where it was initially and should get even better with time. But for now anyway, if you're hardcore about this stuff, a real audiophile, so to speak, a wired listening experience is still the best. Back to you, Jade. Thanks, David. Knowledgeable as ever. I like to wrap up by using one of my favorite analogies. I liken the headphone jack to the humble horse. Once our primary mode of transportation, it soon gave way to the car, leaving the horse to be appreciated for its grace, strength, and beauty. The same can be said with wireless and wired listening. Now that a vast number look to wireless audio as the day-to-day, -day, leave space for the audio files with the high-end hi-fi setups and high-end wired headphones to listen to everything the way it truly was intended. I mean, I do get it. In a world of constantly evolving tech, the headphone jacks seem to be the only constant. Now it's getting phased out. And if one thing is for certain, people hate change. But I feel like five years is more than enough morning time for the humble headphone jack, don't you think? For you jack out there, what was your first pair of wireless headphones that made you say, I'm not going back? For me, it was the OG 
Quiet Comfort 35s from Bose. I put these on for the first time and ever since then I was hooked. So do let me know which ones were your favorites in the comments down below, just below the like button. Jack Ons, you are more than welcome to debate with us. Maybe let me know how wrong I am or better yet, what would it take for you to snip the cord and become one of the wireless free like me? Anyway, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.